we had a very bad experience at IIT. Our uh, payroll software, it runs on Sybase database. Because in those days, in 98-97, when the database software, the payroll software was developed, Sybase was very popular. We developed it on Sybase, and the cost they gave us was 1.5 lakhs. That's the cost we purchased the Sybase, I think 100 users or something. And then now every year the AMC for that is 3 lakhs. 3 or 4 lakhs. 4 lakhs is the AMC, un annual maintenance charge. Then our audit objected, said you purchase the software, which is 1.5 lakh, and then you are paying an annual maintenance charge for that, which is 4 lakhs. Because the government rule book says that the annual maintenance charge cannot be more than 10% of the total cost. Now here you have a software for which you are giving 300% as the annual maintenance charge. But then we asked that can we just stop the AMC? No, it cannot be done because we will not get the support from them and also they give yearly patches, the upgrades and so on. So that will stop. So the AMC is a huge amount rather uh, other than the initial investment on purchasing. So when the software became expensive, people tried the application service provisioning. This was the precursor to the software service. So what they did is that somebody, a company, or entrepreneur, he purchased the software by paying 50 lakhs and then lets people use for our basis. So the person's using the person's using, they don't uh, have to pay that large amount, they just use for our uses. So that was the application service provisioning. <coughs> so the software as a service has got roots in the application service provision, where the software is not sold as a product that somebody buys, but you get it as a service depending on how much you use it. It has element of outsourcing and application service provisioning both in that. And it is a model of software delivery. How you sell it to the customer is not by making it a product and selling him, but uh, you make, he uses it as a service, how much he uses, he pays based on that. So the software as a service is a delivery model and the service oriented architecture is a construction model. And it counters the concept of the user as the owner. You don't own the software. Don't have to buy, install here on your machine. Just make use of that as, as long as you want and pay how much you use it. So the ownership of the software is shifted from the user to somebody who is hosting that software. So somebody is hosting it on a cloud and you are just trying to invoke those services, just paying minimal thing. If there are large enough number of users, you pay nothing. There are few users, it might charge you 50 rupees per hour or something. And it also targets the long tail of the small customers. Now let's see what is the long tail of the small customers. See here, I think this we had told in some other form that uh, if you price your cost, if you price your product, the number of customers increases. That everybody knows. If you reduce the cost, more and more customers will come. If your product is selling only less number of copies it will be priced very high. As the number of copies increases, then the number of, sorry, the number of, uh, the price of the product decreases, the number of copies that are sold increases. And companies, typically they tra strike a trade-off here and they fix the price here. 
and this is the addressable market who can buy that. And then, what if you reduce the price for them? See here, a large number of customers will come in. If you reduce the price for them, a large number of customers will come in. And this is called as the long tail of the small customers. Suddenly you will find that your customer base has increased tremendously and you will be actually making lot of profit. So the same thing holds here on the software as a service model. You have reduced the initial investment, you have eliminated the maintenance charge, only small amount to be paid for our basis and sometimes it is free. So you have many more users coming in and your revenue will increase. So this is the new market that comes in by reducing the price. So the software as a service, as I was saying that it's going to come very soon, already there. In three to four years, you will not even try buying software. All your software is there hosted in a cloud. You can rapidly deploy them. Almost no capital investment. And uh, most of the headache is shifted to the service provider on the cloud who will take care of the continuous operation, backup, update, infrastructure maintenance and so on. So earlier, you make a large investment, buy a software and then see that uh, nobody is using that and uh, then that much investment is wasted. But then there are small glitches which need to be overcome before it actually used widely. The glitches are like this, the data security. You are using the Google Word to store your document. But what is the guarantee that it is not stolen by somebody? Especially if it is a sensitive thing. If it is a bank transaction, you will not trust uh, the cloud that uh, the data will be there and uh, it will not be stolen. The privacy of the customer information, so how do you protect that? So this is a comparison between a licensed software and software as a service. You make an in initial investment, buy the software, several lakhs of rupees. Maintenance, install and configure, greater risk that you find that the software is not useful to you. Invested so much, installed and so on, find that it is not usable. But here, Almost no investment, minimal subscription, many times free if there are large enough users. Fast implementation, low risk, if you don't like that, just discontinue that. Almost no risk of losing your investment. So, you had a long day of lectures, I think still one more is there. So, don't want to really prolong it very long. As I was saying that the success of sitting two hours is not whether you sat through, but uh, whether you can recollect one or two points as you walk out. So let's hear if there are any further questions.
how they provide the maintenance to the uh, that types of software? There's no LOC that how? Okay. Okay. See, let me just uh, summarize the question and tell me if I am wrong. So the question is that in the changing scenario where the software is available as a service and also in the service oriented architecture where you develop your application based on the service provided by somebody, you don't know where is source code, how you will maintain, etc. Then how will this work, right? How will you find a bug or he upgrades his service without notifying you or he just notified that our service is getting upgraded based on some other client requirement and then you will have to make use of this. Right. So you have, as an application developer, you feel that there is a loss of control. Earlier you had the source code, you could see that make changes as you need. But now just you don't have the source code, you are just making use of the service somewhere. is hosted, not even on your location, somewhere remotely. The answer is that, see, there are there is a contract between the service provider and the customer who provides a level of service and what is the service that is there in the contract. And then if there is a change required, then that will be part of the contract. So the things work through contract. And uh, even though there is an apparent feeling that you lose control, you don't have source code with you, but still as long as the contract is honored, it will work. So that they will maintain, they will upgrade it, but they will intimate you and maintain your level of service agreement. SLA they call it, service level agreement. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.